According to Bloomberg, Panasonic plans to develop a new and enhanced version of the 2170 cells used in Tesla Model 3 and Model Y in the Nevada Planet shares with Tesla sometime during 2024 or 2025. The new cells, which have significantly higher energy density, could help lower EV pricing, according to the business. Panasonic CTO Shochiro Watanabe told Bloomberg in an interview that the Japanese electronics company intends to fulfill its goal to quadruple production capacity by the 2030 fiscal year. To do this, he stated that the corporation will not need to create new plants or make significant expenditures in production planning. Hello and thanks for tuning in. Before we go any further, please take a moment to support us by liking this video. Subscribe and activate the bell notification feature so you'd always know when we put out new videos. And remember, sharing is caring. Okay, let's get back to it. Panasonic, whose biggest US customer is Tesla, manufactures around 10% of the batteries used in electric vehicles worldwide. The business intends to begin producing a redesigned version of its 2170 type cylindrical battery cells, which are used in Tesla's Model 3 and Model Y vehicles as well as improved battery production output by 10%. Panasonic has been attempting to increase the energy density of the 2170 cell, with Watanad claiming that the new advances might help lower the entire cost of an EV. Better energy density likely implies fewer cells are required to create a car, potentially lowering the overall cost. Panasonic is currently constructing a new facility for 2170-type EV cells in DeSoto, Kansas, its second in North America. The plan is a $4 billion project with an initial capacity of 30 gigawatt-hours per year. The plant was supposed to be used in 2022 to produce the bigger and larger 4680-type cylindrical battery cells for Tesla's next-generation models, which are thicker and more voluminous. However, Panasonic postponed the project. A third battery manufacturing factory in the United States is expected to be revealed soon, with the business promising to increase production capacity to 200 gigawatt hours by 2030, up from 50 gigawatt hours currently. While there is still no information on the site of this plant, which is expected to create thousands of employment, Panasonic declined over $700 million in state incentives to construct in Oklahoma. Earlier in December, Panasonic announced a deal to buy nanocomposite silicon anode material from Scylla, a California-based firm created in 2011 by one of Tesla's early workers. According to Wired, Scylla's Titan silicon anode powder consists of micrometer-sized particles of nanostructured silicon and replaces graphite in traditional lithium-ion batteries. Swapping it out requires no new manufacturing processes and using it in EVs could soon enable 500-mile non-stop trips and 10-minute recharges. This is all very promising. The Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act, which provides subsidies for battery cell manufacturing in the United States, has provided a significant incentive for corporations such as Panasonic to build and manufacture in North America. According to Bloomberg, Panasonic expects a $587 million rise in operating revenue during the fiscal year ending March 2024. You're undoubtedly well aware that the 2170 battery isn't restricted to Tesla electric vehicles. The 2170, sometimes known as 21700, is merely a classification of batteries such as AA, AAAD, and so on. With that in mind, Tesla used a particular type of 2170 designed specifically for its EVs by Panasonic. These unusual 2170s can be found in both Model 3 and Model Ys produced before the model was moved to Texas. Since starting production on the Tesla 2170 battery in 2017, Panasonic has kept many of the finer details hidden. That's because these particular Panasonic 2170s are designed specifically for Tesla and no one else. As a result, neither Tesla nor Panasonic would want to share too much about the battery in the aim of avoiding needless competition. Now, let us discuss nanosilicon anode battery technology. Silicon has long been regarded as a promising anode material, since it can hold 10 times the weight of lithium ions as graphite. In reality, silicon's first documented use as a lithium battery anode dates back seven years before graphite. However, tests with that element have been hampered by technical difficulties, such as volume expansion of the anode when loaded with lithium ions and the subsequent material fracture that occurs when an anode expands and compresses. However, after almost 15 years of gradual advancements and failed aspirations, silicon's time as a primary material in batteries has finally arrived. 
Some automakers and silicon industry companies have partnered to develop longer-range, lower-cost EVs that might be on the road by the middle of the decade. General Motors and 1D Battery Sciences in Palo Alto, California, are integrating 1D's silicon nanotechnology into GM's Ultium battery cells. Alameda, California-based Sila Nanotechnologies Silicon Anode, which has powered the Whoop Fitness Tracker since 2021, will be used in the Mercedes G-Class SUV in 2026. Group 14 Technologies in Woodenville expects to have its silicon battery installed in a Porsche EV by next year. In late 2022, Group 14, Sila and Amprius Technologies in Fremont secured nearly half a billion dollars to commercialize their anode materials, including $250 million from the U.S. Department of Energy and $214 million in private financing for Group 14. All three intend to have domestic gigawatt-scale factories up and running within the next several years. In April, Group 14 began building on a 20 gigawatt power facility at Moses Lake, Washington. Silicon-based EVUs promise better range, faster charging, and lower costs than those with graphite anodes. It not only absorbs more lithium ions, but also moves them across the battery's membrane more quickly. And is the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust, it should be less expensive and less prone to supply chain difficulties. As it stands, almost all graphite anode material is processed in China. When researchers originally started looking at silicon for lithium battery anodes, as previously said in 1976, before graphite became the compromised solution, the anode quickly disintegrated due to silicon's severe swelling and shrinking during charge and discharge. Adverse side effects hinder the charging process and diminish battery life. Some commercial battery manufacturers, including Tesla, have increased the lithium holding capacity of their battery anodes by adding a tiny amount, often up to 5% of silicon. However, silicon anode startups want to go even further. Most of them are looking into nano-engineered silicon as a solution to the swelling and side effect issues. Yukui, a materials science professor at Stanford and his group launched this branch of research in 2008 with a paper in Nature Nanotechnology about silicon nanowires that could withstand swelling. Others quickly added their own take on this, creating spherical silicon nanoparticles, Core shell particles composed of silicon cores with protective coatings around them, and silicon particles with etched surfaces. Amprius said in March that it had developed a silicon anode battery with a validated energy density of 500 watt hours per kilogram, which is roughly double that of today's electric vehicle batteries. Airbus and BAE Systems have previously installed the company's batteries in airplanes. Amprius intends to reduce prices for commercial flying applications such as drones and air taxes by increasing production at a 5 gigawatts plant in Boulder, Colo, which will open in 2025. Group 14 and Scylla are both keeping costs down by developing silicon materials that look and behave similarly to the black graphite powder used in today's anodes. This, they claim, will enable a drop and change at current battery facilities. According to Gleb Yushin, Scylla's chief technical officer, silicon anodes may be manufactured in the same factories as batteries, eliminating the need for changes. Yushin, a materials science professor at Georgia Tech, co-founded Scylla in 2011 with former Tesla engineer Gene Burdikevsky. Scylla's silicon powder is made up of micrometer-sized particles of nanostructured silicon and other minerals that are held together by a porous scaffold constructed of another material. The material offers batteries with 20% better energy density, equivalent to around 160 kilometers more range for an EV than those with graphite anodes. The corporation intends to double that in the future. Nanostructured silicon may not be the only option to include silicon in anodes. Innovate, based in Irvine, California, has adopted a radically different strategy. Instead of creating silicon nanoparticles and nanowires, the company applies porous silicon sheets tens of micrometers thick straight to copper foil. Its silicon anode batteries are now in the new electric bikes from Lightning Motorcycles in California, delivering around 220 kilometers of EV range with a 10-minute charge. As all of these firms compete to improve output and reduce costs, they will also face competition from developers of different battery chemistries seeking to advance lithium ion. And that concludes today's video. Do let us know what you think about today's discussion in the comments section below. And you can support this channel by liking this video. Subscribe and activate the bell notification feature so you'd always know when we put out new content. 
And remember, sharing is caring. Take care and see you in the next video.